Hello children, welcome you all for this wonderful session. In this session, we are going to learn a poem about gecko, which means a reptile which is like lizard. So before you are going to learn about gecko, I am going to show you a video which is about reptiles. Then you will be getting a clear idea about a life cycle of reptiles. Are you ready? Let's go. Hi everyone. Today we're going to learn about reptiles. Reptile is the name for a large group of animals. Reptiles are vertebrates, which means they have backbones. They are also cold-blooded, have scaly skin, and lay eggs. When we say that reptiles are cold-blooded, that does not mean that they are cold. It just means that they cannot keep their bodies the right temperature without help. To warm up, reptiles move somewhere warmer, often a nice sunny rock. To cool down, reptiles move somewhere cooler, perhaps into the water or a nice shady burrow. Because of this, reptiles mainly live places where it does not get too cold. This is probably why reptiles live on every continent except for Antarctica. Their skin is one good way to tell if the animal you are looking at is a reptile or an amphibian. Reptile's scaly skin is dry and watertight. It may be rough or smooth, dull or shiny, but never slimy. If you see an animal that looks like a snake or a lizard, but it has wet or slimy skin, you're probably looking at an amphibian instead of a reptile. Almost all reptiles lay eggs, although some give birth to live young. Unlike bird's eggs which have hard shells, reptile eggs are soft and leathery. Unlike amphibians, reptiles lay their eggs on land. Even reptiles that spend most of their time in the water, like alligators and sea turtles, lay their eggs on dry land. Reptiles are fascinating creatures and come in many different shapes and sizes. Some people even keep reptiles as pets. Some reptiles make good pets. And some would make very bad pets. I hope you enjoyed learning about reptiles today. Goodbye till next time. Okay children, hope you all enjoyed by watching this video and learnt about a life cycle of reptiles. Here is the iConnect part. Do you know what reptiles are? Listen carefully and fill in the blanks with the correct words. So now I am going to read a passage about reptiles. You should sharpen your ears and answer these questions. Are you ready children? Let's go. Reptiles are two-legged creatures. Reptiles cannot be confused with the amphibians because unlike amphibians like frogs and toots, reptiles have a backbone. They are warm, cold-blooded and love water and land. Reptiles do not have fur or feathers. Instead, they have dry, waterproof and rough skills. Most reptiles lay eggs which have leathery shells and are resistant to drying. Reptiles do not look after their young and abandon them soon after birth. Okay children, shall we go to the first question? Reptiles are dash-blooded animals. Do you know? Yeah, reptiles are cold-blooded animals. Number 2. They are called vertebrates because they have a das. What does mean by vertebrates? Which means an animal or a bird that has a bone along its back. So what it is having? They are called vertebrates because they have a backbone. Of course. Go to the third one. 
their skin is covered with dash or dust of course already i said by reading the video which is scutes and scales number 4 reptiles live on dash and dust yeah it will be living in land and water number 5 they lay eggs so here is a question Can you name any two reptiles apart from snakes? Can you tell me children? Of course, which is crocodiles and lizards. Let us go and check the answers. Number 1, cold. 2, backbone. 3, scutes and scales. 4, land and water. 5, eggs. And next question is two reptiles apart from snakes which is crocodiles and lizards now go to the poem have you seen a gecko it is a reptile most people find geckos creepy do they scare you think about it children if you are seeing a lizard on the wall how do you feel you will be getting very fear am i right most of them will be getting fear the sight of a lizard crawling on the walls or the roof could make you feel paranoid and yeah as you feel fear that it could fall on your head sometimes you may feel like that am i right children if it is falling from the wall what shall i do so when you are seeing on the wall it will be moving from that place am i right So according to those who interpret dreams a lizard symbolizes danger it could suggest that there is a threat to your life owing to your situation or a person so here in this poem you are going to learn about a gecko go to the first answer even though it's very small did you see the lizard yeah which is very small The clever gecko possesses all. What does mean by possesses? Do do you know the meaning of the word, which means to have a particular quality or a ability? So here, the gecko is very clever to catch the insects for its eating. The body organs and this lizard even has a perfect gizzard. What does mean by gizzard? Do you know? It means the part of a bird's stomach in which food is changed into smaller pieces before it can be digested. So here it will be moving gradually and to catch the insects for its eating, which is very talented insect. So the gecko was very clever. The body organs and this lizard even has a perfect gizzard. Its feet are well designed and stick to wood and plaster, stone and brick. Here the poet is comparing its leg with a stick, which is like a matchstick. It's looking very sticky. Its feet are well designed and stick to wood and plaster, stone and brick. And should a predator grab it for lunch? What does mean by predator? Do you know? Of course, it is an animal that kills and eats other animals. So, which means a predator. So here also, it would be a predator to grab it for its lunch to eat. The tail is dropped for it to munch, which means chewing. So once again, I am going to repeat the stanza. Its feet are well designed and stick. to wood and plaster stone and brick and should a predator grab it for lunch the tail is dropped for it to munch its food go to the next stanza while the predator ponders this mystery what does mean by ponders do you know it means to think about something carefully for a long time did you see the lizard on the wall if it is wanted to eat something for it it will be moving gradually at first and at last suddenly it will be catch the insect and eat 
So, this is what a clever and skillful animal which is called a gecko. So, the gecko disappears uneaten and frisky. What does it mean by frisky? It means full of energy to catch the insects for its eating. Another tail will start to show. But now that is just a step to show. What does it mean by step? Short part of something long and thin which is called step. Its tail. Here it is comparing with the tail to catch the insects or other animals. So, hide yourself you tailless beast. What is mean by beast? An animal especially a large or dangerous four footed one which means here they are comparing a four footed one which is gecko or look a bit ashamed at least. Please this tail maneuver do not repeat it makes you look incomplete. What is mean by maneuver? which is a skillful movement. If it is wanted to eat, a, eat a, any animal or an insect, it will be moving gradually and which is very skillful because already it is a clever animal. Am I right children? So, it is moving very gradually to catch the insects for its eating by using its tail. So, this is what the poet wants to tell you about the gecko in this poem. Who is the poet? What is the name of a poet? Can you tell me? Yeah, of course, which is Zai Whittaker. So, once again, I am going to repeat the poem. Even though it is very small, the clever gecko possesses all. The body organs and this lizard even has a perfect gizzard. Its feet are well designed and stick to wood and plaster stone and brick and should a predator grab it for lunch. The tail is dropped for it to munch. While the predator ponders this mystery, the gecko disappears uneaten and frisky. Another tail will start to show, but now there is just a step to show. So hide yourself you tailless beast or look a bit ashamed at least. Please, this style maneuver do not repeat. It makes you look incomplete. Let us go to the checkpoint. What is the first question they have given here? What does the gecko possesses? Do you know? Of course, the gecko possesses all the body organs and a gizzard. Gizzard which means Already I said it is a part of a bird's stomach in which food is changed into smaller pieces before it can be digested. So, here also the gecko possesses all the body organs and gizzards. Go to the second question. What are the gecko's feet stick to? Yeah, that the poet was comparing the gecko's feet by comparing the word which is stick. The gecko's feet stick to wood, plaster, stone and brick. This is what the poet was comparing the gecko's feet. Go to the third question. Which part of the gecko is dropped when it is attacked by a predator? What is mean by predator which I said already? An animal that kills and eats other animals. So here also which part they are asking? Of course, the gecko's tail is a part. The gecko's tail is dropped when it is attacked by a predator. What happens to the gecko's tail after it drops a part of it? What will happen? After the gecko's tail is dropped, only a stub of it shows another part of the tail grows back slowly. So, this is what happening the gecko style after it drops a part of it. Go to the I understand part. Section A. Take the correct options. Question number 1. A gecko has a perfect dash. What is the answer? Can you guess? Look at the options they have given here. Gizzard, food, egg. Which is the right answer? Of course. The answer is 
A. Gazard as a right answer. And second one, the gecko's feet are well das. Of course, it is well designed like a stick. So, the answer is designed. Number three, its feet can stick to das. Can you guess the answer? Of course, all of these, its feet can stick to wood, plaster, stone. All of these is a right answer. Number four, the predator gets to munch the das of the gecko. Which is the right answer? Of course, by using the tail. So, tail is a right answer. The predator gets to munch the tail of the gecko. Number five. According to the poet, the lizard looks like a das without its tail. Yeah, it looks like tailless beast. So, that is what the poet is telling here. The lizard looks like a tailless beast without its tail. Check the answers. Number 1. Gizzard. 2. Designed. 3. All of these. 4. Tail. 5. Tailless beast. Go to the answer the following session. What is the first question they have given here? Why does the author call the lizard a clever animal? Do you know why? Because the lizard can mislead the predator by dropping off its tail for it to munch and then run away. Because it has a talent to catch the insect for its eating. So, the author calls the lizard a clever animal because the lizard can mislead the predator by dropping off its tail for it to munch and then run away. Go to the second question. Why does the lizard drop its tail? The lizard drop its tail to create an illusion for the predator. While the predator munches on the tail, the lizard runs away. This is what happening when the lizard drop its tail. Ok children, to create a illusion for the predator. While the predator munches on the tail, the lizard runs away. Third question, how does the predator react after the lizard drop its tail? After the lizard drops its tail, the predator gets busy trying to understand the mystery. How it was happening, suddenly it was catching the insects by using the tails and drop it. How it is happening? It is a mystery to find out the answer. Go to the fourth one. What does the poet mean by maneuver in this poem? The poet refers to the shedding of the tail maneuver in this poem. What is meant by maneuver already I said? Do you know what is the meaning of the word? It is a movement that needs care or skillful, skillfully moving to catch the insects for its eating. What is the term mystery referred to? The tail of the lizard that he has dropped in order to protect himself is referred to as mystery. So, if it is wanted to protect himself by using the tail which is called here mystery. Go to the think and reflect part. What is the first question they have given? Have you ever wondered why a lizard never falls off a wall? In childhood days, even I to think about it, how it was stick on the wall. If suddenly if it is falling, what will happen? Do you know what is the right answer for this question? Yeah, of course. The lizard never falls off the walls because it has got a very minute adhesive pads under their feet and that help them stick to the walls because it have a adhesive pads under their feet which is help to stick on the walls. Go to the second question. Name of name some other animals that use a clever way to trick their predators. Especially here I need to mention the animal. Can you guess? Of course, which is Chameleon. A chameleon 
camouflages itself with its surroundings to trick its predator into thinking that they are not there. Octopuses mimic other sea animals' appearances to protect themselves. This is what here they are asking. So, not only like a lizard, some other animals have a trick to catch the predator for its eating. Go to the third question. If you could turn into an animal or insect, what would you be? So, this question you are only going to answer. So, if you are an animal like a lion, you will be the king of a jungle, am I right children? Or else if you are an insect like a butterfly or any other insects, you will be flying freely. Am I right children? So, this is what they are asking here. Go to the I feel part. Each poem has a tone or a mood. By mood, we mean the way a poet reveals his or her emotions and feelings though a particular style of a language or expression. Poems can have various moods or tones. Certain tones can be funny while some may use cascans. What is mean by cascans? Do you know what is the meaning of the word? Which is a use of irony to mock or convey contempt. Mockery which means mockery. And satire which means a spoof or a lampoon but ironical humor. Some poems are about love, admiration of nature and beauty or human values while some are sad and talk about death or loss. So here is a question they are asking, what is the mood of the poem which is gecko? Do you know what is the mood of the poem? Yeah, the mood of the poem gecko is funny added with admiration about the creature. So this is what the answer of the first question. The poem is very funny added with admiration about the creature. Go to the second question. How does the poet feel about lizard? The poet feels that the lizard or the gecko is quite an intelligent creature with, it, with its interesting features. So this is what the poet wants to tell. The lizard is very clever and it has an intelligent creature and with interesting features. Go to the third question. Do you think the poet has used humor in this poem? Identify three to four words from the poem to support your view. Here the poet has given information about gecko. That is what we will gather from the poem. In this poem along with a funny tinge. The use of the words which means munch, mystery, frisky and maneuver have brought a funny feel to the poem. Am I right children? So these are the words which is different, which is a new words for you. Am I right? Of course. So here the poet has given information about gecko in this poem along with the funny tinge which by using the words like munchy and mystery, frisky and maneuver. So it feels you very funny. Next part. Listen to this interesting passage about the chameleon, a reptile from the lizard family. Did you see the chameleon? What is the color? It has many colors because wherever it is moving, it will be changing the colors whatever the place in a color like a blue, red, green or pink, whatever it may be. So here is a passage I am going to Read. You just observe it and answer the question. Are you ready children? Let's go. Chameleons belong to the lizard family. There are 202 species of chameleons and they come in a range of colors. Many species of chameleons can change their color and skin patterns depending on their environment. They can change into combinations of bright, bright pink, blue, red, orange, green, black, brown, light blue, yellow and purple. Chameleons can change their skin color because they have different colored pigments under their thin skin. So here you are learning a new information. Am I right children? So we don't, we don't know that uh, how it will be changing the colors because 
they have a different colored pigments under their thin skin. This process of changing color is called camouflage. Camouflaging helps the chameleon to find their prey easily without being noticed. It also protects the animals from the It also protecting the animals from the being noticed by predator. Did you know that the smallest reptile is thought to be the mini chameleon from Madagascar which only grows to just over an inch in length. So here also we are getting a general information about chameleons. So now go to the question and answer. What is the first question they are given here? How do chameleon change color? Do you know how it is changing? Yeah, of course, it has a pigment under their thick skin. So, that is the reason it was changing the color. Once again, I am repeating the answer. The chameleons can bring some structural changes to the upper layer cells of its body to camouflage, which is the process to change the color for example to change the change the color of its skin go to second question how does changing color help a chameleon changing color helps the chameleon to get itself mixed up into the color of its surroundings so that it cannot be noticed by the predator next here is a part which is I X turn. Solve the crossword on reptiles using the clues on the next page. Use an encyclopedia if needed. So here they are given the puzzle. So you are going to do with it. Okay. By using the clues which they have given across and down. Here is a question they are asking a dash of crocodiles, largest lizard, a dash of snakes, a person who studies dinosaurs. So, these are the questions they are given here. You just google and then you will be getting a answer for these questions or else you can use the encyclopedia which I which they have said already. And section B, now identify these reptiles and write their names in the space given. So, here the section A and B both of it I am going to give you as a homework by using the Google source or else encyclopedia. You just find out the answers. Okay children, hope you all enjoy this session. Thank you.